Thank you so much for tuning in on Morning Markets. I'm Amber Canwar. Here's what we've got coming up on the show. You won't want to miss this interview with portfolio manager Sam LaBelle. He is chock full of ideas. And a lot of them are on the short side. He thinks the TSX is due for a correction. He's got six stocks, including some blue chip ones on the TSX. He thinks you should short, so you won't want to miss that. We're going to get better insight into why investors are shrugging off Walmart's hat trick set of results, a beat and a raise. Joe Feldman will join us at 1130. And we're also going to be joined by the chief economist at Ambex Technologies, which is launching the West's first futures contract for nickel sulfate. This is, of course, one of the key components in electric vehicle batteries. And we'll talk about why this market is needed as the world moves to this green energy transition. Ahead of that, though, let's turn our attention to the market action. The market stumbled yesterday as we saw the Federal Reserve minutes come out, signaling more rate hikes are likely needed. The consequence played out in the bond market. We saw the 10-year yield reach the highest level since 2007. That posed the greatest difficulty for the NASDAQ, which slumped to a seven-week low. Let's talk about these dynamics. Octavio Morenzi, CEO and founder of Optimus is joining us now. Octavio, how are you thinking about the sell-off that we've seen in the bond market? Well, I guess people are very concerned, as you pointed out, the Fed is going to be forced to carry on increasing rates. That certainly came out in the minutes quite clearly. And I think a lot of the easing that we've seen in inflation over the course of the past few months has been directly tied back to energy prices. So energy prices came down quite considerably. That eased the pressure on, on, on basically inflation. You saw gasoline, natural gas prices come down quite, quite sharply. And that, over the course of the past five or six weeks, has now reversed. So we've seen basically energy prices start to go up. Uh, price of crude oil is going up, and that is in due turn going to be reflected in the inflation numbers. And it's going to be very, very hard for those to come down. And there's some very some key components in the inflation numbers, like shelter, cost of food, and things like that, that are being surprisingly sticky, not coming down. So I think that all points to basically the Fed basically having to continue to tighten. Uh, we had hoped just a couple of months ago there would be now at the end of that tightening cycle. It looks like that's going to be pushed out a bit further, maybe half a year, maybe a year even, in terms of further tightening to get this really under control. And so then that's the market's interpretation. Is this one that you're also seeing as a valid move in the bond market or is this sell off overdone? No, I think I think the, it's, it's absolutely rational to see that, that the 10 year yields have gone up to the highest level in quite some time. So the, the, it looks like the Fed is going to have to go carry on going up. We've seen basically short term yields extremely high, much, much higher than uh, we might have expected. And basically the whole yield curve become inverted. So that's an interesting thing to keep an eye on um, as well. Uh, particularly for the banking sector that makes its money off uh, basically a steeper yield curve. But so, no, I think there's entirely rational moves in terms of where the movement is. It hasn't been terribly extreme moves in terms of the 10 year yield, but uh, certainly up. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you look at what the minutes say and, and where inflation indices seem to be going, it seems to be entirely rational and not overdone at all. Where does it stop, I guess, is the question. Well, how high will the Fed have to go in terms of the Fed fund rates to get inflation basically under control? I'd sometime ago be saying six, seven, eight percent about a year ago. People thought I was insane at that stage to say a number that high. I think you included. Um, but I think we're, we're getting pretty, we're getting within spitting distance of that now. So a, a few more hikes and we'll be there. Uh, so I, I'm going to stick to that, that prediction I made over a year ago in terms of where the Fed would have to go to basically get inflation under control. Uh, I think that's what it's looking like. Uh, the whole thing has been much more stubborn and stickier than they had ever imagined. I will confess to that reaction, Octavio, and I appreciate you for keeping me honest on that. And, and this backdrop, though, yeah, even though we have seen that and we've seen that momentum, one of the other sides of the coin is that has not been a major limiting factor for the advancement of stocks. At what point does it become a limiting factor to the advancement of stocks? Well, I don't know exactly where that's going to happen and how, at, at what stage, basically, people say we're going to see this unfold now. But I think a lot of the advanced movement in stocks we've seen over the course of the past year has been predicated on the idea that the tightening cycle is over or going to be over very soon and that basically the central banks will start to be able to loosen, at least in the Western countries, in the US and in Europe and Canada, would be able to start to loosen interest rates again. Uh, and that would be very beneficial for the market. So the market, to a certain extent, was going up predicated on that idea of getting a bit ahead of itself, I suppose, in terms of that. And it looks like some of those hopes are going to be 
dash now. So uh, it doesn't really have to go any higher. I think what people are thinking about more than anything is not what is the current level, but where is the uh, dynamics going to be and what's the trajectory that is going to follow. And I think that's what's worrying people and will continue to worry them for the coming weeks and months. And, and you've seen that sort of show up uh under the hood of the markets, trimming tech exposure, which is thought to uh, be a little less attractive at the valuations that they trade at as interest rates go up, but move elsewhere, uh, you know, within the energy sector as those oil prices have gone up, within the financial sector, within industrials. Are you nervous about that rotation as well? Well, I'm not nervous about it. I mean, I, th I think it, it's interesting that you mentioned the financials and what's going on there. Uh, it's, it's not a sect that has exactly covered itself in glory over the course of the past <laughs> year in terms of where stock prices have gone, uh, with one or two exceptions. Maybe JP Morgan has been an interesting exception there, but the rest of the sector has not really done terribly well uh, overall. And I might, might be a bit misguided of the market to ignore that sector. But no, I'm not concerned about the rotation. I think that's a, that's a logical thing to do, is to rotate out of tech stocks into other sectors. Certainly energy is looking very attractive, we've pointed out. Tech stocks are very sensitive to interest rates. It's the most sensitive area in, in terms of interest rates. So it's natural that people try and rotate out of that into something else. So I'm not concerned about it. I think that's the right move to do, and it's, it's entirely rational. So it's interesting. On one hand, you're talking about these rates perhaps going higher, the yields potentially going higher. On the other hand, it seems like the financials are increasingly becoming... I guess we'll call it a homework area for you, trying to figure out, okay, what is the real risk here? What is the real risk here? And, and are they screening as a potential buying opportunity for you? Well, we've seen Moody's and Fitch basically downgrade the sector, the financial sector, the banking sector, uh, either entire sector or individual banks with it and put out warnings and, and watch lists in terms of the next banks that may consider in terms of downgrading. Uh, and I think really, uh, that has been sort of predicated on, on, on a few different points. First of all, they thought the higher cost of deposits would have a really deleterious impact on bank earnings. In fact, exactly the opposite has happened. So it's true that the cost of deposits have gone up, banks have to pay more to fund themselves, but at the very same time, the interest they generate on their loans has gone up even faster. So that has been very, very positive for the banks overall. The net interest margin has increased quite substantially. Bear in mind, these banks are still awash with deposits they got during the COVID era, and that's not going away. The other thing I think that rating agencies and the markets in general thought was that banks sit on a lot of government bonds. And as interest rates have gone up, the value of those government bonds have, has, of course, come down. Now, that's mitigated to a certain extent by the Fed basically coming out and saying we've got a term funding facility. We'll lend you all the money you originally paid for the bonds and use that as collateral. So that risk there is mitigated, not eliminated, but mitigated. Another right. thing they're very worried about is exposure to real estate, and that has not turned out to be so bad.